Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Hey man. Hi. How's everything? Good. That's good. Um, were you able to get the uh the videos? Like I sent those kind of like the one to preview this lesson. Yeah, I watched them. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, those actually dive like they they dove pretty deep to like the topics. Mm -hmm. There's like more things there than like 
what you would see in the SAT. But I think it's like pre pretty much related. Yeah. And, there's, and they also give you like um, tools, right? To strategies to like how to resolve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So th those ones, so like last week's one, um, it's just pretty much using punctuations. Do you have that? Uh, I did see like you sent me the uh, you know, SAT two. Were you, were you able to look at uh, doing the write up? The write up? Yeah. Just to check. I was just wanting to know if you want to like do the essay. And oh, the essay. yeah, I saw that. I didn't have time for it. I had a lot of homework. Okay, no worries. Yeah. If you um if you can just uh, maybe this week uh if you can like give give that a stab and then I'll give you obviously I gave you uh, the the third set of things already. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. The most important thing is um pretty much just like applying the grammar. But do you have any questions about last week's one? Um, I don't think so. Okay, so those are pretty much easy, right? <laughs> like the the ones that this is kind of like a review from uh, last week. It's just sentence combinations. So um, I guess uh, we'll, we'll take a look at these again. Kind of just like bridging the gap, you know, between last week and this week, or like last time and this time um, is you, so when you do like methods for sentence combination, we, what, what did we do? We either, you could just leave it as two, if it's a run on, you can make it two sentences, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other one is, so why don't we just add a comma and then a, a fanboy or a coordinating conjunction? That's another one. So these are like strategies to create like sentence combinations. And if you had, uh, you could also put a two, you know, two independent clauses as um, and put like a semicolon in between, right? Mm -hmm. Or or another thing you can do is maybe transform. You know, and this is the one where uh, it's more flavorful. Like I, I've seen this a lot in in writing where. You, you know, you have so many different uh, like groups of sentences and you, and you wanna like create uh, different flavors of sentences. Another one would be to create uh, a, a dependent clause by transforming one of the independent one uh, to a dependent one by using the subordinate clause. We've seen that a lot. And then the other one is using a colon. And what was that rule with a colon? Like what did you have to have before it? Um, was that an independent clause? Yep. And then what about after it? Um, was that either? It just has to explain or be like a list or. Yeah. Either one. And then like, you know, these bunch of things, lists or a quote. Okay. That's good. Uh, so th that, yeah, just keep those in mind because there, some of these topics will blend like with each other. But uh, now I think, uh, you know, we're going to be talking more about uh, like today, I think we're talking about like participle. Have you heard of participles and participial phrases? Yeah. Okay. So those there's like three kinds of those. Uh, there's the you know in, in terms of clauses, there's like, like a relative. We won't be talking about relative yet, but there's a relative, participial, and then a positives. I'll explain them once we get to them. But I guess just to just to look at this, just to like test uh, what we did last week. These are two sentences, right? Uh, how, how would you combine these two sentences? Let me zoom in. Combine the sentences in the sentence, two sentences in number. This one right here. So this is where it ends. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's many ways, but like, um, usually when I, you know, if it's a long one like this for like the test setting, they'll probably turn turn one of these into like a dependent clause. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's technically like you know, it, what for for the most part, knowing what they are, like all these different rules. There's five different rules. They're good to put on your, you know on your back end, like on your pocket, just to like know what you can do with them. And then like, if there's something that, you know, diverges from what these are, then it's all, it's obviously wrong grammar. But then for the exam, you, you just have to pretty much like, you know, uh, look at all the choices you have, right? And then like, if you don't match any of these ones, then they're obviously wrong. So like for the exam, you don't 
you don't have to remember all that, but as long as you remember these rules. And then like, you know, eliminate the ones that don't, don't apply these rules. Okay, so now let's look, move on to something new. Participles and participial. Like, yeah, these terms get kind of like, it's like, oh, there, there's, a lot of these are just like those words that, okay, why do you even need to put like a term for it? But over time, um, you know, they're actually just like the same rules in math. You know, uh, if you're like doing like trigonometry or like der derivatives or like exponents, there's rules that you just have to follow. And there's, you know, weird names for them, but it's just things that you have to follow. Mm -hmm. So do you remember, uh, so what is a participle? Do you remember what a, what a gerund and infinitives are? Um, I think that a gerund was a- Gerund, yeah. With ing. Yeah, so these three, the participle, the reason why I brought, I'm bringing this up is because they're all related. This participle, mm -hmm. this gerund, and then this infinitive, they're all called a verbal. So these are the three types of verbal. So um, this, this uh, I guess I'll start out with the one that's like less used, but this infinitive, do you remember like the to be or not to be? Mm -hmm. that, that's what it is like, is when you put a two in front of like a predicate or like, you know, when you're doing like to run, to run, that's an infinitive, to walk, that's an infinitive. And then like, the Jiran one, uh, we, we keep on touching this. I'll probably like talk about it more, but um, like formally, but you know, when you're saying you're making like a verb into like a subject or like a noun, mm -hmm. like running is, is my favorite. So this, this is a noun now, but it was, a, it used to be a verb. So that's a Jiran or Jiran. And then the one that we we're actually going to talk about today because related to, um, to, to these other other ones, like sets of uh, topics, is this participle. And a participle is just a verbal that like, it does end with ing. It does end with ing as well. But this is what you call a present participle. And you also have like, you know, ed or d, and there's other ones depending on like how you make it into a past tense. And that's what is what you call a past participle. And then what is it really, you know? That's just the form of it. What, what is a participle? So- um, It's used as like an adjective? It's, it's used as an adjective, yeah? It's, um, it's modifying the, the, the subject, describing a subject, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that right there, uh, and you also have, so the word itself, the word is called the participle. Uh, but then when you have a bunch of words that describe a subject, or like and it's used being uh, it's being used as an adjective to describe a noun, then that you we call that a participial phrase or whatever. So it's just a bunch of um. Before I before I move on to that one, uh, one thing to to note is like, you know, when you're saying uh, ing, mm -hmm. uh, typically this is kind of like you know like that continuous thing, right? Like kind of like in the present continuous. Th that right there though, like when you put an ing. It, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't have to coordinate to the tense of your main verb. And we'll see that, like it doesn't have to coordinate to the tense of your main verb. So you know, if your main verb, as we talked about last time, like that where the predicate is, and the, that right there, if that's in, in the past tense or future tense, this guy doesn't have to be the, in the same tense. It, it can be in the present. For the most part, the one that's being used a lot is the present one. The, the the ed and all these other ones the past participle th doesn't get used a lot it's usually the, the the ing present participle but this doesn't have to be the same tense as your main verb that, that's just something we had to to say okay. so now the participial phrase so this participial phrase this can this starts off the one thing that you can like reassure that it has is it obviously has a participle so it starts out with a participle with an ing verb verbal and then the one like what it does is the same thing as a participle it's just the whole thing is it modifies the noun or pronoun and then is it usually what is that is it usually like added on to a prepositional phrase or yes yes yeah so that's good yeah it's actually like the the other things after the participle so this is either a direct object, an indirect object, a prepositional phrase, 
yes, or like these other things. All those words just means like it's describing the noun or the subject. So that's, the, you know, you, you have to just look for the participle that's describing the subject. And this is where the can of worms comes in. So once we open this up is, do you remember, and uh, this is like all those years ago, do you remember dang, dangling and misplaced modifiers? Um, I think so. Yeah, this is in the video. Like, uh, yeah. It, yeah, dangling mo uh, misplaced modifiers, there's a very distinct, and then the thing is with these modifiers, like I said, for the most part, they're gonna be a participial phrase. Sometimes you'll see a positive one, but um, the, the reason why we wanna be aware what they, these participial phrases are is because we wanna know, we, we wanna avoid dangling and misplaced modifiers. I'll define them once we get to it. And then uh, the other thing is, the other video I think, uh, did you watch the one with the essential and non-essential? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one, I'll, I'll define it more a little bit. So like when you have like an essential uh, participle phrase, that's just saying that there's no comma. You don't need a comma between like the subject it's describing and then the participle phrase, there's no comma. And we'll, we'll look at some examples. Of and then when, when you have a non-essential, um, well, when you have a non-essential, then you do need a comma, so. Uh, where is it? Not essential. Here you go. And you only you need to put a comma. And then the the trick to that is um either you put two commas or you you put no commas. Two commas if it's non essential. And then like uh, no commas if it's essential. And well, you know, there's some tricks to that, and then they'll, they'll be notable for the exam. Okay, so let's just take a look at this guy. So there's nothing wrong with this, but um, tell me what the participial uh, and participial phrases are, and what why are they modifying? Um, kicking is the participi participial. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> and okay. Kicking the can as he walked is the okay. phrase, and it's modifying the boy. Yeah. Yep, and then this guy. So that's good. Um, yeah, this one I won't, I won't say what they are yet, because like, for this one right here, sometimes it can be in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. so, and the other time, like, let's take a look at this guy. Where is it now? After. It's, yeah, it's in the middle. So if it's when it's in the middle. And then this is what you some you know this is the reason why I said like you need, you may need two commas, or no comma. So if there's a comma here, and then the, this is still obviously describing this boy, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like somewhere else, like like it's after it or before it. Uh, when there's two commas here, that means it's non-essential. Non-essential meaning like you can take this guy out. And then just read, now remember that that was a trick, you can take out whatever's in between. Yeah. Them. And you can read this guy, the boy, the boy worried about the bro broken window. I mean, I, the, the boy is a subject, worried is the predicate, and then, you know, the whole thing, the verb, main verb, but that still works. So, but sometimes, sometimes you can have this one where there is no comma, right? And then when there is no comma, this is what you call a, essential there's no comma and when you read this the boy the reason why it's essential is then maybe you don't know you don't know what the boy is uh who, who's this boy that like that, that's worrying about the broken window and maybe it's important to distinguish them so if if it's important and that's uh for the for the exam i'll talk more about it for the exam you won't really have to like choose between with two commas or no comma it's more of like um, is there is there one that doesn't make sense and then there's one that is you know with a with two commas or one where you do have to put this and then there's something that doesn't really make sense if you do have to pick between these two um, I'll tell you more about that this is just recognizing what these are so and then here this one is at the end so this still makes sense um, the one thing is though like when it's at the end uh, sometimes you know when it's like the, I think the best one, like if you always, I was to place this, it would be 
right here at the beginning or right here where it's like right next to it like after right next to it because if it's at the end you know there's a this is a modifier right it can modify any any noun preceding it or like around it right and then if you look at these nouns there, there's a noun here and there's this another noun there's a window so like obviously um and you don't want to you don't want to like be able like the way we have it in like in real life obviously we're talking we, we usually fill in the gaps and then like we know already that it's not the window kicking the can right it's not the window <laughs> it's, it's obviously the void but it, for this case like when yeah th this may be you know gra it may be grammatically correct but th th this that's the thing where um you have to worry about dangling versus uh misplaced modifiers and uh what that is is really when when you don't have your uh participial phrase next to your subject it's not clear this the subject it's modifying uh you and but then there is a subject then that's what you call a misplace and if the subject sometimes you'll see it when the subject isn't even there uh, that it's modifying and then and, it, and it's clear it's not there and that's what you call a dangling and we'll see more examples of that okay what about let's see there's nothing wrong with these ones uh okay okay what about this one actually so the the, the previous ones were just to look at what what those are how do you correct this one Are you still there? Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear you. Okay. Did, did you um? Yeah, this one. How how do you correct this one? Would you move it to the beginning? Okay. So when you're combining these ones uh like and i want you to create like a participle right like i guess uh let me refer that correct this one where you're trying to create a participle so what would that be like this guy right this can be a, this can become a participle oh i was looking at the wrong one okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> um you can make it a comma a period okay yeah so w when you when you do that one like yeah you can make this a comma and then and the this follows is wrong yeah so this can become a participle right yeah okay so now i, I want you to tell me what what is this describing what is this modifying where's the nouns i she and then th this is a noun right mm -hmm. this is a special type of noun. what was this called again her progressive or no um remember that this is a special type of um hearing yeah there you go yeah yeah the, the terms just really come out because um this is Thawing is a verb, right? But now it's being used as a noun. So it's a gern. Okay. Anyways, so which one is it modifying? Is it the thawing or is it the sheet, the ice sheet? Um, the thawing? Yeah. Cause, so th because this is because of a time thing, right? This is a time thing. So it's modifying this guy. Okay. And then, so let's let's see. Uh, for where it is right now, I, I think it's good. If you put it at the beginning, um, you you may come into contact, or you may actually accidentally form a a misplaced uh, modifier because it's closer to this guy. The the rule here is that when when you're trying to change some uh, sentence, uh, uh, like independent clause into like a, I guess now it's a dependent clause, right? Like because you made it into a a participle phrase the 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 rule there is that put it next to the subject it's modifying 
so that you so that you can avoid the like doing this next thing so let's move on um so does do those two make sense the participle phrase and where how to recognize those mm -hmm. okay now let's try to apply those because like for one it's, like, it's good to recognize it but then the other is like do we, do we know how to avoid because it's a you know the exam is going to be correcting these like wrong things that are present in like the passages it's really like recognizing what they are and then what can you do so dangling modifiers so dangling and misplaced mod uh, modifier first of all is something that gives more detail or describes a word and this word can be like this can be a, p a bunch of words phrases or clauses and this is where it comes out is um there's three types of modifiers and a modifier like i said it modifies like a, a noun um there's the one that we just talked about the participial phrase and then there's the relative one we'll talk about this next time and then the appositive phrase so this appositive phrase i'll just touch on it this is like you know when you're talking about like when you when you say a subject like oh um mr F you know fred and then you comma it um, uh, the one uh, you say something, but it's not a participle. It's not an ing. But you, you talk about Mr. Fred, right? Mr. Fred, the owner of the pizza place, and then you put comma. There's no ing there, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like what you call a positive because it's just modifying. It's giving more detail to Mr. Fred or like a noun. But there's no ing. Then that's now participle, but there's no ing. So that's an appositive phrase, and it's still a modifier. Okay, so dangling modifiers, just to know what these are. It's always good to know what they are so that you can correct them. Um, so dangling modifiers, we kind of touched on this. This is the one where the, the noun is got the, the subject, the subject that it's being modified, the subject being modified is gone. It's not, it's missing. It's not in a sentence. And how you correct this is just, just add the subject. Just add a subject that it's supposed to modify either a person or a you, I, you know, just add that subject. And then for the misplaced modifier, that's why it's misplaced because the subject is there, but then um, it's just not next, the modifier is not next to the subject. So if, it not, if it's not next to it, the solution is put it next to it. Like put the, put the participial, put the positive, whatever modifier next to the subject. And that's a misplaced. The subject is there, but it's just misplaced. Dangling, the subject isn't there, so you need to add it. That, that's the difference between those two. It's, um, but essentially, what you want to do is just have a subject, you know, in these modifiers. Because what are you modifying if there's no subject, right? Okay. Uh, let's look at this guy. What, uh, what do you do? I think there's something wrong with the sun. Um, this the uh, okay. Modifier. Uh, it's what? What is that? Dangling modifier. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's this one's a dangling modifier. Why? Um, cause like while watching a baseball game isn't modifying a subject. And it's like the subject that we have here currently is this guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then a lot of this is context. Like a ball can't be watching a baseball game, right? <laughs> so, or a bat. Uh, so something is missing. So it is dangling. Yes, that's correct. It's dangling. And so how do you fix the dangling modifier? Um, you can change it so that it like fits the context or add a subject. Yeah. So for this one, there's many ways. You just have to look at the choices. But the main like rule is add a subject so, to the modifier that it's modifying. So you could either you should watch out for, uh, you know, after the participle. So while watching, you know, and then the other one would be while you are watching a baseball game. Um, uh, in order to change the phrase of dangles in the second, it's going to be changed in, in order to, by naming the doer, yeah. The other thing is, is by naming the doer. So, what about this one right here?
Um, is this another dangly modifier? Because like born in 1906, but doesn't say who was born in 1906. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so a lot of times it's just, you do have to use the context there, like for these dangling ones. Because like the very first thing I would think is like, oh, let me look for the, the noun it's modifying. But it's not there, then yeah, the, it, you do need, so the thing is, it's not gonna, mod, you know, you're not modifying these people. Because like born in, like your first check, is it modifying? It seems like it doesn't modify it. So what do you do to change that? Um, you add a subject. Okay. And then like there's many ways, I, I just put this, many people will come to love the beauty of music of Billy Bob. And just you add the guy, you know, Billy Bob, which is like right here. And who was born in 1906 in Long Island? Okay. What about this one? What is it, first of all? Is it misplaced or dangling? Um, misplaced. Okay. So what, what's being misplaced and where, where should it be? Um, it should be moved to the end because it was the thief who was wearing the uniform. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Like, like this guy again, there's two nouns or a noun and two, there's two nouns. And then so, and then this guy right here is a modifier. And then you check, okay, is it modifying that? Context tells us it doesn't, it's not that guy. Is it modifying this guy? It looks like it does. So, but it's all the way out here. So, but there is a subject, so it's misplaced. So how do you solve a misplaced modifier? change where it's located yeah so put it next to the the guy that's being modified and then so i would just do that like you know many people were tricked by the deceptive thief right uh who and then the deceptive put it over here who was wearing the uniform so you just put it after it so as long as you put it after it or like before it but not like another noun that's like in between them because that's going to make it a misplaced modifier all right uh, what about this guy? Um, misplaced again. Okay, good. And what's being misplaced, and then where, what should you do? Um, looking out the window, and it's okay. Jake looking out the window, so it needs to be next to it somehow. Yes, good. Okay, let's uh, let's speed it up. What about this one? These these ones, the misplaced ones are good, but then you always have to think twice about the other guy. Um, I know it's dang. Okay, okay. And the the one thing about the dangling ones is like, what noun do you put? You know. Yeah, so it means it needs subject. Yeah, that's the thing I don't like about the dangling ones is when you correct it, you have to think about like what, and in context, what's the proper like subject to put. Okay, and then so how you correct this is you just add the subject, right? Mm -hmm. So you look at this guy, finally understanding what he meant. So finally understanding what he meant sounds like it's gonna be you, you know, I. Like, mm -hmm. fi it's something about like a person like he understood it so i i would put i i became scared and then you know put putting the everything else in there and the other thing is too is uh, let me think uh okay let's look at this guy and then let's see how you correct it i'll, I'll um i'll kind of talk about that like uh after you correct so what is this one um misplaced okay and then what's being misplaced um the walking down the street okay and then it's the modifying supposedly the what i okay okay so this is how you fix it right i and you put the comma comma and it comma then the walking down the street found my keys right mm -hmm. and when you correct it this way and then you put something in between you, you should be able to still take this guy out right mm -hmm. and say and look at it i found my keys you have a subject you have a predicate so that should still be a sentence, right? That, that's, uh, that's the thing, like, you have to check that again once you, you know, you take out whatever you just put and uh, rearrange, and then it should still be a sentence, supposedly.
If it's not, then it's not the right correction. Another way would be doing this guy. So for the most part, yeah, you have to move it, but then when you move it, you still should have a sentence without it. Okay. So let me see. I mean, these ones are simple. Um, okay, let's do this last one for, for the dangling and misplaced ones. How do you correct this? Or like, what is it, first of all? Um, dangling. Yeah. And then what? What is uh? What What's the modifier? Um, having become frustrated, trying to solve difficult problem. Okay. And then what is it that you need to add? Um, a subject. Okay. So for this one, uh, what would be most appropriate subject to put? It's kind of similar to the other one. Like I? Yeah. So it's an I thing. So you put in an I and then this is what you get. Having become frustrated trying to solve, I miss having colleagues nearby to consult. So yeah, this one, I don't like the qualitative, like just, uh, you know, uh, assessing it if, it, if it's uh, what kind of subject. That part right there, it's prone to errors. But if you, if you, you know, obviously, you know, you have to do that. Um, for the other one, it's not as bad uh, for the, the misplaced one because it's already there. So how, how is that? Does that seem clear enough for what they are? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's move on to the, just, let me see if this is the last one. For, yeah, th this is the last one. And then for another one for like participial phrases or like modifiers, um, there's also a thing where you have to look at essential versus non-essential clauses. So let's look at what they are. So essential clauses. And I kind of introduced this, um, an essential clause is when you are, and sometimes this is called, it doesn't really matter. It's sometimes called identifying, defining, and restrictive clauses. That's sometimes what is synonymous with what the, the, that is. And like when, when you're looking at this guy, um, you know, same with the participial phrases, uh, like uh, you, you want to be looking for this word. Um, it's usually an essential uh, clause if you have a that you know before everything else so that word begins I mean, this clause begins with a that and that's usually like and this right here and this essential versus non-essential again these are like modifiers um and what these are what these guys are doing are they're they're trying to modify a noun the subject so we'll we'll see what it is once but then just remember that this is usually um, initialized with a that. Sometimes these these are other words that it could start with. Sometimes you can have a who. Sometimes you can have a where. And another maybe some other time, maybe not not so often, is which. So it could be a that, who, where, or which, but that definitely an essential one. Who, where, or which can be essential or non-essential. We'll look at that. But uh, so who, where, or which depends on the context. That is always, it's never a non-essential. That is always an essential. And this one, um, so one of those things that you, you have to remember these ones is if you remove this clause, this modifier, uh, the sentence itself will lose like its meaning. And you'll see what I mean by this. And this is, and the reason why for this one, um, like how, how you usually see this besides like how you recognize it besides like the, the, it's, it begins with that is these clauses, uh, these clauses do not, and they're harder to find because they don't have a comma. So they start with that and they're usually like after a noun um, that it's modifying. So they're usually not separated by a comma. So there's this rule called like two or none uh, rule. And then what this means is two commas or no commas. So when you have this, and this is an important rule to remember for these guys, is when, when you have this essential clause, 
uh, you should not, it should be the none rule. So there should be no comma. And then I'll tell you like, you know, things to remember, like what you can ask yourself to remember, like if you need a no comma or two commas. So non-essential, um, non-essential, and just to relate it back to essential is you can't have that because that is only for essential, but you could have which for the most part, which is the one that's mostly used. When you have a which, this is the one that's a non-essential. Sometimes you could have who or where, but these are a little bit iffy. Who or where can be either essential or non-essential. But if it's a which, like 99% of the time is gonna be non-essential. If it's a that, 99% of the time is gonna be essential. So what, what these, these ones are is, again, it modifies that noun. It gives more meaning to it. The non-essential one, the reason why it's non-essential is you can actually separate it with a comma. And that's why it's called non-essential. The sentence should be, a, you should be able to read the sentence without this thing after the comma. Um, and it should still make sense. For the essential sentence, there's no comma. That when you take it out, it loses its meaning. So there's two, there's two or none rule. The essential one is no comma, none rule. The non-essential one is two commas. It's separated by two commas. And this is, you know, two commas. So none is with essential, two commas is with the non-essential. That is with the essential, and then which is with the non-essential. So let me, let me clear that out. Um, so here, here are the questions to ask, knowing that. So when you're trying to like, you know, for example, what, what if you had to pick between like one with, a, with, a, with two commas and one without commas, um, then you, you have to ask yourself these two questions. So the first question to ask is, is this, you know, the information, um, you know, the one in, you know, the, you're separating from the rest of the sentence, is this, in, in, is this sentence or this clause essential or non-essential? That's the first question. And then the next question is, remove the words between the commas and s. The next question is, does this sentence still make sense? So first, sentence, first question is, is this information essential or non-essential? The next question is, does this sentence still make sense if you remove the words between the commas? You know, the thing that we've been talking about. And if, if, the, uh, if these are your answers, so if it is essential or the sentence does not make sense if you remove the words between the commas, if it doesn't make sense and it's essential, then you put no commas as your correction. And if you answer, if it's non-essential, the thing between the commas, and then if the sentence that you're removing does still make sense between the commas, the sentence that you're removing does make sense still, and it's non-essential, then you should, you should put two commas. You should either leave the, leave the commas or put them if they're missing. Does that kind of make sense? I know those are like the rules for these two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, that's like the, you know, the, the hardcore rule, but there's some soft rules where maybe they can like diverge from that. But for the most part, that's the rule for essential and non-essential. Um, let's take a look at how you apply that. Uh, okay. Okay, so for example, there's nothing wrong with this one, but this is just kind of like what it is. It's always good to see what it is first. Um, so the man, and then the man is a subject here, the noun. And then there's this thing between the two commas. We've seen this kind of flying over metropolis. This is a participial phrase, flying over metropolis. And then, you know, whatever comes after it. So I'm just gonna explain. So the man is the thing being modified. And then flying over metropolis. So he is flying over metropolis. And then this, like, let's ask ourselves, is this essential or non-essential? This sounds like a non-essential clause because like, if you read it, right? Uh, the other thing is like, if it's not too, obvious is if you remove it let's try removing it the man use his x-ray vision to find the bank robbers that kind of still makes sense right mm -hmm. so if the sentence still makes sense without this guy and it's non-essential then you leave it with two commas all right and then let's take a look at maybe like 
sometimes th this one isn't as obvious. I mean, I, I'm just, you know, obviously this one is more of like a non-essential one. Um, but let, let's just take a look at, so there's no commas and then two commas. And there's not, you can't have one comma though. You just can't have like one comma. So this is definitely wrong. You can't have just one comma to the right or to the left. So this is wrong. So you, the solution there is just to add, but then, okay. So this one was the non-essential one. And this is the one with the essential. Okay, this one is a little bit, if you're into like fiction. Uh, so you see this one right here? Mm -hmm. So he who must not be named. And then that right there is obviously like a noun. Um, you know, the whole thing is a noun and then is a bad dude. That's the predicate. But what if, what if, what if you didn't like recognize that? So what if, uh, you know, um, for example, what if you put this comma right here? And then, you know, if you put that comma, let's look at this. He is a bad dude. He, who, who's the he, you know? That's, that, that doesn't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. like, context again, like that's why I don't like it. So context again says like, this doesn't make sense. He is a bad dude, who is he? So if it doesn't make sense, and this is obviously capital, these are capital. So this must mean it's an essential clause. And if it doesn't make sense, if you remove it, then you put, no comma you remove or you leave it or you put uh, you don't put any commas you remove it or you put no commas so that's essential non-essential is you have to have a comma in there the two commas and if you remove it it still makes sense you know so oftentimes when you when you put like the counterpart you could just take a look at like what is being capitalized in this case yeah i mean you know maybe it does make sense but it's never going to be that difficult, you know. It's it's, it's very obvious for the most part. Um, here, th this is the other one. So um, we'll talk about it next week. That positive phrase. Uh, this is what you call a positive phrase when you have something like this. Like, this is obviously you know just a former CEO, and you're going to say something about the former CEO. The former CEO who who is the former CEO? It's Bill Stockton. That's the, you know, it could be more than that, but that, that's obviously not like a, it's a modifier, but it's not a participial, it's a positive. And sometimes you have something like this, former CEO Bill Stockton. That right there is like one thing, you know, that's a, like th that right there is like the noun and then, you know, we'll meet all these are predicates. So there's nothing wrong with this one, but like, you know, if you assess if it's essential or non-essential again, uh, you would just put a comma between these. So, it, you know, you ask, you ask yourself again, is the former CEO, uh, and then is the, what you're trying to modify, and Bill Stockton is your clause. Um, it, from this, it sounds like uh, essential. But then let's try to check if it is. Uh, if you remove it, does it still make sense? No. No, right? Yeah. So if it doesn't make sense, then you put no comma and it's still essential. What about this guy? Um, it still makes sense. Yeah. So Bill Stock uh, is removed, former CEO, will meet with these guys. So, you know, you have to look at this the, the in context with this. So when you remove it and it still makes sense, it's not essential. And then I think this one, I'm supposed to put two commas here. Okay. All right here, actually. Okay, I think that's um that's it for you know the theory. Uh, let's take a look at like the last 15 minutes. Uh, some of these guys. You know, we always do this one. Uh, okay. Did you get a chance to look at this? Um, was this the same one that I did for homework? No, this is the third one. So they're, they're going to be different. Like, um, I, I will give this to you again, like once we're doing like, probably going to breeze to the reading one. But, um, you know, once we're doing the math, because it's like two parts, you, you, you can do this again. Like you, you already have it at your arsenal, so you can just, you know, start on it. But this is different though. Okay, then I think I did the raw. I think I did this one for homework. Oh, you already did this one? Yeah, I think so. Okay, because I, I did send this to you early. Yeah. Okay, well, tell me what you got then. I, I could just look it up, but what is number one?
And that's good because then you can tell me why. Um, is there no change? Yeah, this one's good. How come? Um, like it matches up with the like happier, healthier, and yeah, like, right. Yep, the, the the comparison comparative ones, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, for the uh, but why not why not these ones though? So this one is gone. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you need a comma for C if you already have a subject? Uh, if you have a subject, you do need a comma. If you don't have a subject, uh, for this one, I think that this is pretty bad because you said it says happier, healthier, and then it should have been happier and healthier. Mm -hmm. So this one's gone because there's nothing here. What What is that one? Yeah. Let's take a look at this one. Um, so happier, healthier. And then the original one says, and more productive. And then this is healthy, happier, healthier, and they are productive. So yeah, this one isn't right because it's not really doing this um, comparative thing. You know, like you're not doing like the extra level. I forgot what it's called, but um, it's like, you know, happier, happiest, right? Superlative, like, uh, then ha and you have healthier, but then you can't say productive, right? You can't, that's wrong, right? <laughs> So you have to add more there. But this one is, if you don't have more there, then it's just that base level, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not the same level as happier and healthier. So that's why yeah, it can't be this guy. So yeah, it's no change. Okay, what about number two? Um, B? I don't, I don't know why this thing gives me like a, okay. Yeah, B is correct. The numbers are like off, uh, okay. Why? Um, it matches up with like the theme of the paragraph. Okay. And then the other ones don't, right? It introduces, it doesn't introduce the remainder. Like, you know, it's not in context with the other ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these ones, all right. So is this the one you actually did then? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I guess that's good. Do you, do you think you can do the other one too? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just more practice. The more the more you do, yeah. Like the you can do that one, and maybe I'll, I'm gonna be giving you a fourth. Maybe what I'll do is I won't give you the new one until like, you know, <laughs> until the time is pretty short. <laughs> okay. okay, so number three. Oh man, the thing is like off again. So I think this is for this guy, yeah. Uh, yeah, l just look at your um, just, just look at your numbering. My numbering every time I put it on my on my iPad, it messes with the numbering. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, just take a look at yours. I don't know why it does this. Um, a. For this one, um, it's let, let's see. So let's read what it says. Chicago show and as well. Does it say three here for yours? yeah okay just making sure okay so when you're gonna add this one here right share i'll show the as well as i wouldn't and then and in the next sentence the second rhythm is still talking about these guys it's still talking about these guys right mm -hmm. so and then when, what is this one talking about workers in offices with windows slept there's just no, there's nothing about the circadian rhythm right it, so mm -hmm. it should be one of these guys it, sh it can't be these ones so let's look at which one so it says C says no because it interrupts the discussion of the circadian rhythms. Yeah, no. Let's, this sounds like it's the right one. Let's just take a look at D, because it does not take into account whether the workers were exposed to sunlight outside the office. This this isn't what this is talking about. We're talking about the circadian rhythm, so that's why it's C. Okay. Okay. What about four? And is this one four? Is this one four? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, C. 
Yeah, this is an easy one. This is the, the possessive one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one's just a grammar one. I don't know if we're going to touch it, but this one you, you, you probably got. It's just, you got to have the right possessive. Okay. Five. Um, no change. Yeah, this is an easy one. Like, especially when you have these, um, what's it called? Like subject verb agreement. Mm -hmm. So th this one is like, uh, this, one, this one's a singular. So this one's a singular. Okay. Six. Um, B. So let's, let's take a look at this one. So this is another like rhetorical one. These are usually, for the rhetor, like right now we're still covering like mostly grammar, but um, I will get to a point where we're going to talk about the flow and transitions. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's mostly very qualitative, so it sucks. Um, so this one, you have to look at the, you know, the previous sentence uh, and like see if there's something there that will kind of like jump out at you that you have to transition into, which will make sense. And one of those is the productivity, right? The employees, they're talking about like their sleep and then, you know, productivity. And then this next one says, one company in California gained a huge boost in its employees' morale. So let's take a look at that. Um, if you put in B, saw a 5% increase in productivity. So it talks about productivity. And let's take a look at, so this might be the one. Um, let's just see. Um, C, save a great deal to its operational costs. So say one company in California save a great deal on its operational costs when it moved from artificial lit distribution. So, so it, it doesn't really transition, right? Because the previous sentence was talking about the employee's well-being and productivity. So it's not this guy. And then what about this guy? Um, invested large amounts of time and capital. So let's put that into the sentence. One company in California invested large amounts of time and capital when it moved from art and uh, yeah, an artificially lit distribution facility. So this one is also not the one because there's no transitioning from the previous, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you look at no change, just to check the no change, one company in California gained a, bo a huge boost in its employees' morale. It does talk about the employee though. But the thing is, what about the employee? It's talking about their morale. It's not talking about their productivity. Yeah. So it's not that one. It's really close, though. It's talking about employees as well. So, but it's B because of this productivity, which is also here. So employees, productivity, or well-being. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at this one. Seven. I think this is the one. Oh, combining them, okay. Oh, this is good, it combine, combines the sentences. Okay, I think we talked about this one. Um, C. Okay, let's take a look at C. So typically constituting 25 So this is this is kind of like before I like I said this. This is kind of like one of those like you have to look at the grammar. Obviously, you're combining the sentences, right? But at mm -hmm. the same time, they all they always throw you this where it seems like this is just a grammar thing, right? It seems like it's just a grammar thing, right? But you can never leave out, and that's why you have to always, I guess, in the back of your mind, you always have to like think about the rhetorical. So like you have to go back actually to the previous paragraph. And then like, it's just one of those things, like it may seem like a grammar, but then the last check is whatever, I, whatever sentence I put has to also transition. So that's a rhetorical, so it's grammar and rhetorical. These, these are the more difficult questions. The mm -hmm. grammar plus rhetorical ones, I really hate these ones. <laughs> so um, like, if you take a look at this, 
uh, typically constituting 25 to 50% of the building's energy use. Um, artificial light sources lower worker productivity and are costly, and, and are costly, okay. Um, I mean, yeah, you are combining those sentences, but the, there's no relation to the previous for this one, right? There's no, there's, we were talking about worker productivity, somehow employer productivity. Mm -hmm. So there, it doesn't talk, it just talks about this, this paragraph. Like C is good if you're just talking about grammar. Yeah. But the thing is, at the back of your mind, you always got to check this guy. It's not always, it's not always explicit. It's most of the time implied, but like, just always check the last step before you do like the grammar check, a grammar correction, check for the rhetorical. Let's look at, um, let's look at B first. So B, the costs of artificial life aside from, uh, typically constitutes anywhere from 25. Again, um, th this is also good. Uh, it's another, I mean, this is, these are very similar. Uh, but but it doesn't have a rhetorical aspect it doesn't transition and then so this one right here artificial lights which lower okay so now this one talks about worker productivity right mm -hmm. so it's probably one of these two this one also talks about worker productivity so let's check the grammar artificial lights which lower worker productivity are and um and are costly Typically constitute anywhere from 25 to 50 percent of buildings energy use. So also guys, let me see artificial lights, which lower worker part. So okay. So you know how we have this witch, right? Mm hmm And what 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 happens when they have this witch? What what is it? What is it called? Non essential. Yeah, so this is non-essential. And let's read it. Artificial lights typically constitute anywhere from 25. So it's good, right? It still works. Yeah. But so that checks off it's non-essential and now let's check how what is it modifying is this a, a dangler or like a like a misplaced one so artificial lights is your noun right mm -hmm. and what let's look at this which lower worker productivity it's modifying artificial lights yeah so the thing is that can also be a context thing Maybe they are costly, and this is what the difference that's like. If you take a look at this, they're only describing the artificial light, which they're only modifying it with the costly um, adverb, whatever, or like that modifier. They're, they're only modifying this guy, right? The artificial light sources are costly. Mm -hmm. And it, they're not modifying, it's not associating this um, lowering worker productivity to the to the to, to this like subject it's not modifying that one mm -hmm. it's only costly but this one is modifying it's saying that this artificial light is costly as well it lowers worker productivity right mm -hmm. but so it's like a context thing and that's why you have to probably like look at um whether it does lower pro like worker productivity so for me i would probably just uh if you did pick d i would probably just split this you know like if like you know just guess maybe it's a or d for mm -hmm. the most part because these are the more difficult ones like i said you have a grammar plus a rhetorical aspect yeah and it's implied so who knew that you had to do a rhetorical check uh and then apart from doing a rhetorical check now you had to check what you're being modified what's being modified you know mm -hmm. and um that's just the thing like um th it seems like this is the most this is the answer it's a yeah and the reason the reason why is because the artificial light doesn't lower worker productivity it's only costly mm -hmm. i don't know that one's more difficult yeah so we'll, we'll just uh, yeah for these ones well i'll probably um let, let you know more uh, like how you assess it for the most part you just make sure and the, the trick is make sure you also check the rhetorical yeah and then and then, and then now check the grammar but then the next aspect is the context. The context, like, is it, is it, uh, you know, like is artificial light actually lowering something or it can be anything or is it just costly? And then the last thing, if the context doesn't really make sense, it doesn't lead you to the right answer. I would just guess because you still need to answer the question, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I think, 
uh, these ones, uh, yeah, like if you if you want to talk about these ones again, we'll, we, we can do that. Uh, but please do, uh, yeah, the fourth one, and if you can, the second one. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aaron, I think we're good. And um, yeah, like please do let me know, like if you want to cover more of these ones, you know, oh. like if you have questions, you know, following up doing like the these mm -hmm. guys, let me know which ones, and then if you have questions about the theory. Yeah. Cool. Hi, right, man. Okay. I think we're good. Have a good one. You too.